It's like dumb over is dumb over is because okay. So we're gonna skip the formalities of mixing up the pre-workout. You guys know what I do. I already had my pre-workout. And uh, okay, let's cut that. I don't like it. All right, we're checking in with you guys at I don't like that either. Just Fuck this. Quick warm up, 10 pound dumbbells, lateral raises, presses, simple stuff. We're just gonna get some blood in the joint and get, get, uh, get moving and grooving. Okay, this isn't something that I mentioned including in the warm up, but I do like to do some banded uh, over and backs. I believe that's what you call them. But just overall, warm up the shoulder and improve shoulder mobility and shoulder health. Like I said, just some dumbbell side lateral raises, simple stuff. Do like 15 of these, go into some presses, 15 presses, just to warm things up, simple stuff. It's important to not just jump into things. Okay guys, we are currently four weeks out. We're gonna train some shoulders today. First movement is gonna be reverse pec deck. I like to start here, kind of a warm up movement. I personally think Starting here allows me to push more blood into the rear delts. Um, I find that after pressing, side laterals, things like that, um, I don't connect as well with the rear delts. Just give you guys a quick update on, on where we're at in prep. Um, like I said, I am four weeks out. Food's low, energy's low. Um, the gas tank is depleting, but it's not empty yet. But that doesn't keep us from getting in here and working hard. You gotta give these sessions as, uh, as much as possible, everything we've got. So starting off here, reverse pec deck, Gonna work up to uh, one all out set and then we're gonna uh, execute a rest pause on that top set. So as you guys see, I am doing this with, I try to do this rather with a straight arm. But what I think is important is to have some external rotation in the elbows or in the shoulder rather to drive into the rear delt. I find a lot of people will do this motion more in here where they're gonna be hitting more of their side delt, opposed to externally rotating and really driving the contraction into that rear delt. Another thing you'll realize is that the range of motion for the rear delt is actually pretty short. So you can see he's stopping right here. I think what a lot of people do, they make the mistake of driving too far back and end up with more of a scapular retraction than actually just engaging the rear delts. So really out to about here is peak contraction on the rear delt. Anything outside of that, you're gonna be contracting rhomboids, traps, and it's unnecessary. So it's fairly short range of motion on these. Yeah, yeah, just for fun. So, I'm at my top weight here, um, pyramided up in weight, about three sets just to get to this top weight. Um, we're gonna go an all out failure set into a rest pause. So I'll, I'll fail at this 250, I'm gonna take 15 deep breaths, I'm gonna go to failure again, 15 deep breaths and go to failure again.
Ooh. Okay. Where we're at right now, guys, I know I preach progressive overload training, log booking. Right now, being four weeks out, I'm not really paying much attention to my log book. Um, I'm aware of what the log book says. I am annotating in any wins or losses, but I'm not beating myself up over not progressing a lift at this point. What I really consider a win right now is matching anything I've previously logged in the previous weeks. So I think that's really important to not lose yourself in your logbook and get discouraged when you're not winning week to week. Because right now, you just simply don't have the energy to have the output to win every week. So don't get too caught up in it. Again, keeping a, an eye on it and annotating that in your logbook is smart so you have a gauge of where performance may be dropping off. And at that point, I make adjustments. If, if I see that performance is dropping off on certain exercises and on certain days, that's when I know it's time to pull back a little bit. And I may pull some of these intensifiers, making sure we don't accumulate too much fatigue. You're gonna, you're gonna hurt somebody with that thing. I always tell you, you're spinning that fucker around, you're gonna hit somebody. <laughs> Just be careful. He likes to grab that stick and spin it around like it's a Rhodesian fighting stick, but it isn't. As you guys see, per usual, just doing three to four reps on these warm-up sets. This is strictly warm-ups, and we're gonna work our way up to one top set. Um, what I'm gonna be aiming for in that top set is just an all-out set of 20 to failure. Um, so as close as I can get to 20, as long as I'm taking that set to complete failure, and if I overshoot 20, great, I'm gonna go up and wait next week. But right now, where we're at in prep, we'll see. Okay. What's a gym video without chalk? I have fucking nothing. <laughs> Okay. Come on. Yep. That's it. Push. Let's get together. Go. Yep. 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 Push it. There you bitch. Fuck. Whew. When she goes, she goes. That is uh, a good indication for me that we are really emptying the gas tank. When uh, there's no glycogen stores, when that muscle shuts off, it shuts off. We're wrapping up here with the Smith machine press. Just one working set there. 
we are gonna make our way over to the hammer strength uh, behind the neck shoulder press and do some pressing there. I'm already warmed up, we've already been pressing. So I'm going to jump straight to two plates here. No need to waste our time with one plate. That I would just count as like junk volume. And I think that's what a lot of people do is they just waste their time. They're gonna do that one plate for 12 reps and these for 12 reps and another plate for 10 reps. When really those sets aren't enough to cause any stimulus for adaptation. It's just junk volume. So don't waste your time. If you're warmed up, just get right to it. Feels nice. Yeah, on three. One, two, yep. Okay. While we're talking about pressing, it's not just what's going on up here. You guys really need to plant your feet, make sure your feet are square, and be able to drive through the feet all the way up into where you're pressing. So I see a lot of you guys, crooked feet, tap dancing, moving your feet, shifting them through the press. Please stop all that shit. Plant your feet square, connect them to the ground and press. The only thing that should be moving are your arms. Don't move your feet. What we're doing here is working up to a rest pause set. So again, this is just gonna be one working set, but we will implement a rest pause set. Failure set, 15 deep breaths, failure set, 15 deep breaths, failure set again. And what we're really trying to accomplish with the 15 deep breaths, I'm trying to regulate my breathing. I want my breathing to be normalized or as normalized as possible in between those sets. And what you're accomplishing with these rest pause sets, say I'm gonna do this for 12 reps. Because of that rest pause set, that next set, I might add four more reps to that. And the following, I might add three more reps to that. So what that ends up being is seven more additional reps on top of that 12 reps that you could only do with one set. So what you end up with is 19 total reps with a weight that you can only do for 12. So by constructing that set in a way, you're exposing yourself to that load for that much more reps. So it's that much more time under tension with this load. Yep. Like I said, just kind of keep me flowing. Who? Right. One, two, up. Ooh. One more. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, on three. One, two, up. Oh. Okay. <sighs> On three. One, two, yep. <clears throat> yep. <clears throat> We're done with our pressing movements and we're gonna move into some side lateral movements. So we're gonna start hitting the side delt. Um, first movement's gonna be a cuffed single arm side lateral raise. And I really prefer this cuff over holding on to say a D handle. That way you're eliminating your grip from it. You're eliminating any forearm. You just get to brace against the cuff and raise your arm. So to me, it feels a lot better. It's less stress and strain on the forearms 
And overall, I think it's just more effective to transfer all that load right into the side delt. And another thing is, you guys might not know this, but I'm missing these three fingers on my right hand. So sometimes holding on to shit is hard for me. So this actually mitigates that as well. I'm able to cuff and raise. As far as my warm up sets go, I like to pyramid up in sets of 10 and accumulate some volume on the way up. Um, I really don't mind accumulating fatigue on my, uh, on my sets leading up to my top set with side lateral movements. I think personally side laterals, delts rather, side delts can take a little more volume. And overall, I appreciate the more, I appreciate driving more blood into that muscle as you're working up to your top set. So you'll see, I'm gonna do some, some sets of 10 leading up to that top set. And again, this is simple, nice, slow, three count negative, pause, drive hard, contract, one, two, three, pause, drive, contract. Just all about control, guys. Control, explode, squeeze, control, explode, squeeze, control. Try to make all reps look the same. Just remember, there's no benefit in doing things the wrong way. So do everything in your power to do things right and it will pay off. If you notice guys, I'm trying to bring this out directly to my side. I'm not going out front. I'm going right to my side. So that's something to focus on. Okay. I'm gonna work up to one all out rest pause again. I really like rest pauses. Um, but with this, I'm gonna go to failure and then I'm gonna go into partials and just really get everything I can out of this movement. Grabbing the Versa grips, we're gonna do some seated side lateral raises, and we're gonna superset that with a heavy partial. So, supersets aren't something I do often, but this particular superset I really like. As you guys see, intensifiers, I typically implement either a drop set or a rest pause, um, but for this, we are gonna do a superset.
Okay, so with these, I'm on an upright bench, but as you see, I'm not flat back against this. I got my butt scooted out to the edge of the seat, and I'm gonna bring the dumbbells directly to my side like this. So this kind of, it does mitigate any use of momentum. I'm not pulling off the pad to lateral raise. I'm in a fixed position where I'm pressed against this back pad and I'm just doing lateral raises. The only thing that's moving are my arms. So it's almost an incline position. So I won't be doing the supersets on my warm-up sets. I'm just going to pyramid up to my working weight and then we'll get into the superset. So I'm only gonna superset the working sets. God damn. Well, those might not look like much, but those feel fucking awesome. Especially superset it after the full range of motion. Whew, love those. Okay, so we did one set there. I'm gonna repeat that again for another working set. Um, again, just kind of aiming for 12 plus reps here and then about 15 reps with the partials. Um, I think I'm actually gonna back off the weight on those partials a little bit and try to get 15 uh, good reps, but we're just gonna do two working sets here, repeating the same weight, repeating the same superset. Two more. Ooh. So that's 
a wrap for the shoulder portions of things. We are going to now move on to biceps. So right now my split, I have biceps paired with my shoulder day. I don't have an arm day, so I'll do triceps with chest and then biceps with shoulders. So that's what we're gonna do now. First move we're gonna do is a single arm preacher curl on the stride preacher curl. I really love this machine because of these three pegs, you get to load different portions of the strength curve. So we can overload at the beginning, that way it's nice and heavy in the beginning, but gets lighter at the top during the contraction. That's personally how I like it right now. Um, that's how I'm gonna, gonna load it this time. Just one top set here, pyramid sets of 10 up to one top set of 10 where we uh, reach complete failure. So what I really like about this single arm is the opportunity for bracing and then joint alignment. I really think it's hard to beat a single arm preacher curl when we're talking about bicep isolation movements. As I talked about before, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this 10 here and I'm gonna overload the beginning of the movement and I'm gonna make it heavier in the stretch. So it's gonna be heavier at the bottom of the movement and as I come up to the top, it's gonna get lighter so I can contract really hard. Okay, let's get two more. Okay, one more. Make me work for it. Whew. Ah, damn. Okay, one thing I'll know on that, guys. As you see, I'm controlling every negative on the way down, but what I, people have a tendency to do is to get to the top of that last rep and then just dump it. So as you guys see, I controlled every negative all the way to that last rep. Even on the last rep, I gave even more emphasis to that last negative, because in my opinion, that last negative is the most important one. I don't think there's any way you can argue that that is gonna carry the most value. That last negative is by far the most important negative, and it's the one that everyone throws in the trash can. So, when you fight for that last rep, control that fucker down. Okay, Steve, two more. Oh, yeah. One more.
For some reason, I'm having a little bit of energy coming back. We're done with the bicep curls here, and we're gonna do more bicep curls there. So we are gonna do some incline dumbbell curls. We're gonna work up to a top set of 10 to 12 reps, and then we're gonna repeat that weight for one more set, aiming for the same amount of reps. So likely the reps will fall off by a rep or two, but that's not a big issue. So with these, I like to keep palms facing forward the whole time. That way the stretch is always on the bicep. If you come here, you're alleviating the stretch and stress on the bicep. So palms facing forward the whole time, big contraction, elbows are pinned back to my side, control down, full stretch, full squeeze. Nice controlled motion on the way down, full stretch, full squeeze. And these should hurt like hell, in a good way. did one working set here. I'm going to repeat that weight for another top set. I'm aiming for the same reps, but likely a rep or two will fall off on the second set. I'm not concerned with that one bit. Um, we're going to jump right in, but guys, if it doesn't feel like your arms are going to fall off at the end of your set, you didn't do it right. These should be brutal. Terrible and great, awful, but fantastic. Love them. We are done with the incline curls and we're gonna move on to some hammer curls. I'm just gonna work up to one all out uh, set and a rest pause set. As you guys see here, I'm backed against the wall. I'm kicked at a little bit of an angle. And the reason I'm doing that is to mitigate any use of momentum. I don't wanna swing my front delts. I don't wanna use any body movement to assist me in doing these curls. So pressing up here against the corner of this wall is gonna help with that. So.
Okay. Whew. Okay. That's a wrap, you guys. So, you see here, I'm using my straps because I don't want grip to be the limiting factor here. So, don't be afraid to strap up on movements like this. But, like I said before, man, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so fucking. So, that's a wrap on shoulders and biceps. We're kind of riding on heart at this point. You really got to love this stuff because there's not much motivation or energy to do this shit at this point. You know, I, I wake up every morning excited to improve. I'm excited every morning knowing I get to get on that bike or stair stepper and nail my cardio. And that's one step closer to being my best self on show day. So you really, really got to want this stuff. Otherwise, you're just not going to give it your all. If you don't have that excitement and drive, it's going to be really difficult to make it through these hard sessions. We're at four weeks out. Things are going to get harder. Things are actually in a pretty decent place right now, but it's just a sign of things to come. As fatigue accumulates and energy gets lower and lower, you really got to fight and find that inner drive. But if you truly love this stuff and you fucking want it, you'll find it.